up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another Giants update video. Today I'm going to try and cover two things. One of them is with Daniel Jones and Eli Manning. Um, of course, we know Phil Simms has his belief in the Giants quarterback. Shout out to Diggy. You guys go ahead over there and check out his video on that topic. And now... Uh, Daniel Jones recently on a Sirius XM interview was talking about his current relationship with former Giants quarterback Eli Manning and then in the second half I'm gonna try and get to the whole Kenny Galladay and court situation where this man is apparently um, I don't know he's having some type of lawsuit case that that involves him in the courts that we are now finding out about I think it's only been like a week or so and he might miss some training camp time if he doesn't really get it sorted out basically and that's a more complex situation for that one i'm gonna just read you the quotes um of exactly what the article was saying about it because i am not sure i understand what's going on but back to daniel jones real quick for the first topic so like i said he was on a serious xm interview where this uh kind of came up where the interviewer brought up the fact that in his rookie year he kind of was mentored by eli in his second year in 2020 um obviously eli wasn't there he was retired and also covid was a thing um how to keep in touch with him and exactly what kind of uh relationship do they have as a mentor and mentee or you know just are they friends so these are the quotes first from the interviewer how about having eli around now i mean he was talking to archie about you and going to the camps and knowing the mannings and everything else I just think having a guy like Eli, having a guy that knows what you do, it's got to be a big plus to have him around. So first things first, from the question, having Eli around now, that's obviously referring to the fact that Eli is going to be back in the building. He's going to be working with the Giants in, you know, some way, shape or form with the, uh, I think it was the, the fan engagement role. And there was another role that was also there for him, but he has his own office at you know east weatherford new jersey the giants headquarters basically and he's gonna be there you know every day i'd imagine and he's definitely gonna be you know popping into practices every now and again popping into workouts every now and again definitely speaking with the coaches whenever you know he basically uh feels like it he's basically he's gonna be a presence in the building now but not as a player just as you know a a fellow employee at, at metlife and we'll see how that goes how that works out and of course, the fact that Eli was talking to, um, you know, Archie about Daniel, I could only take that as a good sign. We already all, all make the jokes that Daniel Jones is like the, the illegitimate son of Eli because of the fact of how much he looks and acts like a Manning and the fact that he did go to the Manning camps and whatnot. But this was Jones' re response. He says, yeah, it is. He's done it. He's played the position in New York. I think it's part of it and obviously played at a high level and did everything right on and off the field. So he's a great guy to look to and someone who can help. And on and off the field, I mean, I think that's the thing that DJ does the best. He always does and says the right thing. In interviews, in post-game um, press conferences, you know, in the Sirius XM interviews, I mean, you don't really hear much from DJ outside of football. And, and it's similar to Eli in the sense that Eli was um, much the same way in terms of the types of responses he was giving to a lot of questions and how he carried himself in the media. I mean, nobody's questioning can Daniel Jones survive in the New York media. I think through his first two years, he's proven that he's can. Um, where it's a little bit dissimilar is, you know, Eli was a bit more forthcoming with his personality. Like, I'm still not sure what kind of personality Daniel Jones has, right? And maybe he doesn't want to show that. Maybe he wants to keep that on the wraps so that nobody could have anything on him. Like, we know Eli was the jokester. I mean, I'm not sure if I've heard much of that from uh, DJ's teammates. Although, Darius Slayton has been roasting him on Twitter with his cooking skills. So, at least we know he's a bad cook. And, of course, with the quote, it goes without saying, Eli is a, a great person to go to for help as the most successful quarterback of the New York Giants. Next question was, I'm asking, is he a friend of yours? Because I could see the two of you being good friends. And Daniel responded with, yeah, I think we're friends and we certainly have stayed in touch. It was a little different this year with COVID. He wasn't around as much. But yeah, no, we're friends and I've certainly learned a lot from him and he's helped me a ton. So it's kind of great to hear that they're friends. I mean, I don't know why. Maybe it's because, you know, as fans, we want the uh, past quarterback of the New York Giants and what we hope to be the future quarterback of the New York Giants to be good friends. You know, they're similar in a lot of ways that, that we've already mentioned and beaten to that countless times. 
Oh man, I, I agree with the interview. I could definitely see them being good friends. So it's just nice to know that. And that allows, it's an avenue for greater communication. It's an avenue for maybe an easier way of Eli getting to DJ and giving him advice or an easier way of DJ getting to Eli and asking for advice. An easier way to pass along critiques um, about DJ's game that Eli might see like, hey, I know that, you know, you you don't really have fear of the pressure and whatnot, but sometimes you need a little bit spatial awareness because the guy could be barreling down at you. But the fact that, you know, they have that line of communication and uh, Daniel's been accepting it, as he said, he's helped them a ton. That's really good to know. And the fact that Eli's going to be back in the building, I would expect, you know, one or two conversations during the year, maybe after before a game between the two regarding DJ's game. And then now, switching over quickly to the Kenny Galladay situation, which this kind of came out of nowhere, you know what I mean? We signed Kenny Galladay, we got our number one wide receiver, everything's good in Giants land, and all of a sudden this thing comes out like he missed a court subpoena, and he might be held in contempt of court if he refuses to answer that by July 22nd. It's just a couple of legal issues. Now, thank God, it's not something as serious and as heinous as what we've been seeing over the past couple years in the NFL like you know Giants players such as uh, DeAndre Baker being involved in a robbery and a possible shooting Aldrich Rosas in the um you know basically hit and run at car accident this is literally Kenny I think just missing a court hearing which isn't too bad and it's in a civil lawsuit um over memorabilia now, before I give you guys the quotes from this uh, news article here, just because it's a lot of uh, legal jargon that I myself don't completely understand, but what I take away from it is that it's not something too serious. Kale basically has to give the court a really good and detailed reason as to why he missed you know, his hearing and he would be excused or pardoned for it. And it's something that his lawyers are going to handle. It's not necessarily something that he did wrong. It's kind of between Galladay's team and I think his former agent. But this is what it says. With no real liability in a civil case arranged by Galladay's former agent, Jason Bernstein, the litigation forces, focuses on memorabilia company Redland Sports and MVP Authentics over violated exclusive lights contract and money owed to Bernstein for Galladay's new contract with the Giants. So Jason Bernstein is suing those memorabilia companies for violating exclusive rights contract by working with NFL agent Todd France to set up an autograph signing in 2019. So this is something that happened two years ago. And Galladay played with the Lions at the time and then he became a client at Todd France. It kind of sounds like rereading it, it literally kind of sounds like maybe Galladay's, um, you know, former agent is kind of salty. And the fact that Galladay just got a new contract with the Giants that worth $72 million uh, has something to do with this man trying to get some money out of him. Um, and then this is the last thing I'm going to show you guys. It says the Giants receiver must submit a detailed response to part of his absence by July 22nd, five days before the start of Giants training camp. No jail time appears to be imminent for Galladay based on the court filing. So in terms of that, it, it seems minor. And I'm sure, I mean, this Kenny Galladay, once again, he just got the big bag. He's an NFL player. He should be able to afford a great enough lawyer that could get him out of this. And I don't even, I like, I just think it's a salty ex-agent is what it sounds like. But you guys let me know what you think. Maybe it's more serious than that. Maybe somebody else in the comments has, a, you know, more legal knowledge than me that can help me out with this. But that's it for now. Put your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.